up, Bogey Beast Kato here, and today we're playing cards. I have Rosie and Frankie right here on my right. We're gonna be playing. He's a big hand already. <laughs> He's putting chips in the pot. <laughs> we're playing some one-two. It's a wild game, a lot of crazy action. I just got here. This is my third session. My second session was my losing stream session yesterday. Let's get the money back. Let's hit the felt. What's up, Poker Beast, and welcome back to the vlog. Three hundred dollars in my stack. This is a special edition episode. Frankie and Rosie of Next Gen Poker to my right. What an exciting session to be a part of. Ace three of hearts in the big blind, $300 in my stack. There's been an under the gun straddle. And then a $10 raise out of the hijack. The cutoff makes the call. I'm gonna come along as well. The under the gun player completes for his $5. And we're gonna see the flop four ways, $38 in the pot. And the dealer drops on the felt jack, king, ace. I've hit top pair with a backdoor flush draw. It's a dangerous board, well connected. I check to my opponents to see what happens. I'm willing to call a bet and $25 is the bet. It comes out of the hijack. Folds around to me, and of course, I'm going to make the call. It's heads up action to the turn. The two of diamonds appears. It checks through, and the river comes. The four of spades checks through again. I flip up my hand. Ace three is going to be good. I'm scooping the first pot of the night. Let's go. Take a moment and check out these hands that I fold. It's kind of soothing watching this. And don't forget, a thumbs up really helps my channel grow. I really appreciate it. It's all I'm asking you for. I don't have sponsors. I don't have merch. I just have my thumbs up. Thank you so much. Let's get back to the action. King, queen, offsuit. I'm in the low jack, 353 in my stack. The under the gun player is straddled. The middle position player, we'll call him Mr. Pikachu, has raised to $20. I'm going to come along. I make the call. I don't really like this call. It's a little loose. This is not a great hand to mix it up with in a multi way pot. The cutoff calls. The button makes the call. The small blind says I'm coming along as well. The under the gun straddler says, well, I already put five in. Why not 15 more? We're headed six ways to the flop. $122 in the pot. And the dealer puts out four queen nine. Top pair without the nut kicker is a dangerous hand to navigate with this many players in my position. There are a lot of draws possible. I'm slightly blocking the straight, not blocking the flush at all. When it checks to me, I'm going to put it in a bet, a big bet, a pot size bet, $80. We're going to head over to the Frankie cam, see my live reaction after I put the $80 in the pot. I'm wearing the next gen merch. I look like a goofball. But most of all, I'm having fun. Frankie sweeps over to the player to act, and he calls $80. He throws them in the pot. The other three players fold out of the way, and we're headed to the turn. Heads up, $282 in the pot, and the dealer drops the three of clubs. Now we're on to the rosy cam. He gets a shot of Frankie. Frankie's having a great time. He comes back over to me. I'm faced with a tough decision. $253 left in my stack. I feel like I have the best hand. I feel like my opponent could be drawing. I want to make him pay to play, and so I ship it all in. I gotta say, I feel like I'm in the middle of a next-gen poker vlog. It's because I am. Next-gen blends poker with the lifestyle of college kids, having fun, showing not only the game, but then the aftermath of what happens when you have a ton of fun playing poker. Make sure you check out their channel. Now it's up to my opponent to make the call, make the fold. He tosses in a chip. He makes the call. We're going to the river. It's the five of diamonds. Flushes miss. Most straights miss. I flip up my hand, hoping to be good. I'm on a comeback. Hopefully it continues in my opponent mucks. I'm scooping another big pot. I'm stoked. I feel great. Thank you so much, Rosie, for getting my <laughs> reaction. I It's weird looking at myself on camera. But that's YouTube. That's the name of the game. And it doesn't matter because I'm scooping this pot. 769 in my stack. The comeback session has just begun. Hopefully the flame doesn't peter out. Hopefully the gunpowder doesn't get wet. Let's continue on. Let's kick some booty. All right, maybe that wasn't the most inspirational speech in the world, but you know what's inspirational? A giant chip sack, 769 in my stack. I started with 300. It does not take me very long to pick up my next hand. Pocket nines in the low jack. There is a straddle on the pot, only $4. It folds around to me, and I'm going to open the action up to $20. A lot of players have a tendency to want to limp small pairs and hands like 5, 6 suited. I think it's in general not good to have constructed a limping range. Most hands you're going to want to open with if you want to play them with at all. Plus, instead of limping, if you were to bet these hands, you'd also be betting your aces, and it disguises your range. It gives you more board coverage. So I'm definitely going to be opening here. If I'm coming into play, I want the other players to have to pay. Unfortunately, the straddler may have heard me say that because he puts in a 3 bet to $60. This player has definitely been mixing it up at the table more than most players. He's been having a lot of fun. I think I can make a call here. Set mine. I may already have the best hand, although, of course, if I don't have my set, it's going to be very difficult to navigate. But for $40 more, I make the call. And we're going heads up to the flop. A wild jack-5-10 appears. Ooh, the 10 got me excited. I thought it was a 9. My opponent immediately bets $65, not wasting any time. Mr. Pikachu is at it again. His chip protector with his back to me showing no respect. It makes me want to call. 
But I look at this board, there's just nothing I can beat. There's no reason to continue. I'm drawing thin, if not dead. I toss my hand away. And he's kind enough to show up for the vlog. Get Pikachu out of the way. Flip those cards over. Pocket Queens. It's always fun to wake up with those in a straddle. Now, just imagine if I hit my nine. That is why we set mine right there, folks. The next beautiful hand we're looking at is 7-9 of diamonds under the gun, 7-0-9 in my stack. I'm going to throw my range chart out the window and bet $10. The middle position player says, no, 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 let's juice it up a little more. Let's make it 30. The middle position player to his left wants to come along, makes the call. The low jack says, I'm in. The cutoff says, wait for me. And of course, I'm going to complete the action. $133 in the pot. I call for 20 bringing the pot to $153. Four crazy Texans and one Californian headed to the flop. And the dealer puts out five, six, four. I'm drawing to a very strong top straight. But also I have the open-ended at the bottom. I decide I'm going to get a little tricky with this one. I check it, wanting to put in a check raise. And it gets around to the low jack, and the low jack takes the bait. He counts out chips. Decides on about a one-third pot size bet, $50, bringing the pot to 203 and the action's back on me. I could play it safe. I could just make the call here. It would give me great odds going to the turn to make the call. But I raised a very small preflop, and then I was the last person to close the action, completing. I could represent every single straight, every single set, every single two pair, and every single flush draw. I'm not here to play my cards. I'm here to play my range. 8-7 is just as likely to have as 9-7 for me. On top of that, I have so few bluffs here. 9-7, ace-5 of spades, maybe ace-x of spades. I decide to go for it, 175 being shipped to the middle of the pot. What does my opponent have? What will he call with? Even top set should be a little nervous here. He could already be crushed, and there are a lot of turn cards that could crush him. He takes a long time to decide, going through all of his options. Then he finally decides to probe me a little bit for some information. That's not so bad. Uh -huh. oh, kind of feels like it. Open to ten dollars. Did you just the X and the thirty? Yeah. Check raise. Really yeah, perfect. Any tips? My opponent mucks. I never find out what he has. All I know is that I thought it through. I went with my gut. I went with my plan, and it worked. I'm scooping another pot. Let's listen in one more time for some clues. I mean, he could have he could have had a combo draw, but even a combo draw I'm basically flipping with. So my chip stack is growing faster than Bitcoin. Six five of clubs and the hijack. Eight eighty two on my stack. There's a straddle on the pot. The middle position player calls, and I bump it up to twenty. The button makes the call. The under the gun player wants to come along as well. Mr. Pikachu, Pika Thunder says chips into the pot. We're headed four ways to the flop, $83 in the pot right now. And the dealer presents me with some good news. Those chips are likely coming my way. Jack, five, five. I have to double check and I do indeed have a five. When it checks around to me, I wanna see who else wants to tango, who else wants to gamble. There's already a lot of money in this pot, so I bet $50. When you lead out with trips, I feel like it disguises it. Cards are mucked around the table until the under the gun player ships his whole stack in. $81. He's all in. Action's back onto me. I'm, of course, calling. No problemo. Let's go to a run out. Hopefully it's clean. The turn is the four of hearts, the river, the jack of spades. My opponent flips over jack, deuce, offsuit. Rivered me. Oh my gosh. I was headed to the sky. I was doing so well. I was about to be at $1,000 on my comeback session. Now things seem to have taken a turn for the worse. The next hand up to bat is pocket jacks in the low jack, 781 on my stack. There is a $7 straddle on the pot. It's folded around to me, and I'm going to open the action $30. The hijack and cutoff fold out of the way. The button stacks out some chips and makes the call. The under the gun player who straddled decides he wants to put in the extra $23, rounding the pot to 93. Three-way action going to the flop, and the dealer lays on the felt 2104. My jacks are still the highest pair out there. Maybe someone has ace-10. Maybe someone has queen-10. I want to see. I want to put some money in the pot while I still have the best hand. I bet $50. And both the button and the under-the-gun player get out of the way. I'm winning a small pot, but headed back in the right direction. I decide to put an under-the-gun straddle on. Try it Texas way. I get king-10 offsuit. Not the worst hand for the straddle. The middle position player to my left makes it 10. The other middle position player calls. The low jack, the cutoff, the button. They all call. It gets back around to me. Only $6 to complete to see the flop. I could brace here, but King-10 is just not such a great hand. I'll see a flop, though, for six more dollars, $63 in the pot. Six players headed to see a flop. It's going to be really hard to navigate this out of position with a dangerous hand. And the dealer doesn't make it any easier when he puts five deuce king on the board, giving me my top pair. Now I have to tread extra carefully. I'm going to play this one defensive mode. It checks around to the player who rivered me with his deuce jack, puts in $25. Now it's personal. It folds around to me, and I'm definitely seeing the turn. 
especially against this opponent. I want all those chips back. I call. Everyone else folds. We're going heads up to the turn. 113 in the pot, and the dealer puts the eight of spades on the board. I defer action to my opponent, letting him invest his own chips into the pot. I'll come along in check call mode. I don't want to bloat the pot. I want to have pot control in this situation, but I definitely don't mind calling that $55 he just put in the pot. It looks like a slightly injured gazelle limping towards the back of the herd. I want to get greedy. I want to get all those chips. Those chips were supposed to be mine, but then I have to slow myself down. You cannot take anything personal in poker. It will only lead to you playing worse if you do. I decide I'm just going to make the call. Stick to my original plan. Try to get the showdown as safely and quickly as possible. The river comes out the seven of clubs. Once again, I really want to go all in with his playing hands like Jack Deuce. I think that I could probably get him to call with much worse, but I just decided to check him to him. He checks right back. I show him the goods, and they are good. He mucks right away. King 10 in the straddle is going to be scooping it. We're headed back to the $1,000 threshold. We're trying to cross it. We're trying to make this a well-rounded comeback session. 917 in my stack, and we slide right into a beauty. We look down the one and only pocket aces. Unfortunately, after the flop, Rosie said, Cato, you're not recording. So I started recording this hand a little late. Basically, action folded around to me on the button. I made it $20. The big blind was the only player that wanted to come. On the flop, he checked. I bet 50, and he called. We're headed to the turn. 141 in the pot. The six of clubs comes out. My opponent checks to me again, and I'm going to, once again, put a nice size bet in there. About two-thirds pot size bet, $95. I want to charge all the worst hands than mine that still have a decent amount of equity. My opponent... Decides he's coming along, no problem. Oh, $95. He doesn't have much behind, only about $35. So when the river comes out, the two of hearts, there's only one thing to do. Put him all in. I do, and he calls. Time to reveal those beautiful ladies, and they're going to do the job. He mucks straight into the pile. And I'm scooping a $401 pot. I'm up over the $1,000 threshold. Thank goodness. I'm sitting next to my lucky charms, Frankie and Rosie, because I'm having a great day at the poker table. Why wasn't this the day before on the live stream? It's okay. I'm going to be going back to the lodge, back on the live stream, to get my redemption. I have spoken. One thing I always say I'm good at is stopping when you need to stop, and that's what I decide to do. I rack up my chips and take them to the cage to turn them into cold hard cash. If you haven't subscribed, make sure you do. I'm in for 300, out for 1,038, for a profit of 738. My trip total squeaked into the green at 149. Thank you so much for watching. Cato out.